Good morning, afternoon, or evening. For the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings, and welcome to Roll Call, a look into the regiments that help make up this thing we call Foxhole. Today, I'm joined by the leadership of Division, known by their DIV tag. Who runs the show around Division, if we want to introduce ourselves individually? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm called Bert. That's not my name, but <laughs> in game, everyone calls me Bert. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm technically the leader. Uh, we really kind of have a council of officers that run the full show. On my end of things, I'm I'm not part of leadership. I'm actually I think one of, if not the newest member of uh, a division lately. Uh, joined only a few days ago. Uh, oh, and my name's Charles. I'm Polak. I'm a Foxhole addict, very salty one at that, with a thick Polish accent. I hate this game, but I love this game, and yeah, I play in Division, funny clan. And I am Octavian, a fairly newer addition to the leadership. Uh, joined the game about two or three years ago, but only joined Division in January this year. So, uh, full name is Division, right? Not THE Division, just Division. Yes, yeah, right. Division. So tell me, what's the, what's the story behind that name? Because that seems like a, that's a very bold choice, right? Just division. Uh, so, some might even call that bland, but I, I think that's, that's kind of a more bold approach there. What's, what's the story behind it? To be honest, um, like division started as a, like a small clan, which one guy you know created, and he started to run it. But there, there he never really gave you like explanation why is the division, like you know the name, why is it. <laughs> But I think it kind of evolved because, to be honest, we kind of do everything, you know, from, like, we are just the division, you can, like, do whatever you want, we you know. Like, I don't know how to say it, like, you can imagine it whatever you want it to be, you know? It's like, you know, like a simple name. It's, um, from what I've experienced so far, it's, they, we don't specialize in any particular area of Fox, what we do. Armor, infantry, lodgy, artillery. Cheat um, posting also. Building recently. Yeah. Hmm. So you're not armor division, you're not infantry division, you're just division. A division. Yeah, we kind of generalize and everything. Would, would it act, Would it be, let's get it on the record, Would you? are you bothered by the division, or do you just prefer division, or do you not care? Doesn't matter. Doesn't really. matter. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. I'm, assu I'm assuming you gentlemen have played Tom Clancy's The Division. I'm sure there's plenty of jokes yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> you're asking for it. Anyway. No relation. So about when about when was your regiment's founding? It was founded at the start of the update, the arms race update. Yes, the arms race update. Arms race yep. update. My goodness, what? It's, it seems they so long ago. What? Fifty eight. Uh, oh, no, so. like, like, what? If, I oh, don't goodness. know. What fifty something is? I don't know. I'll add in later, but yeah, uh, the so so it's uh, kind of a more recent uh, regiment, uh, specifically built around Foxhole, or was it? Uh, I know you mentioned someone making it earlier. Was it a, a gaming group before? Or was it just a Foxhole regiment? I mean, uh, it was a dedicated Foxhole regiment, hmm. but it like this is a quite a weird and wacky story how we ended up here, you know, as division right now. So yeah, but it started as a Foxhole regiment from the ground up. I notice uh, the logo that you gave me here has a has a, a motto on it, facta non verba. Can you tell me what that means? Ah, uh, you know, that's a very excellent question. And the, uh, then the answer is we don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> we do, Hold do on. no way. And it's like, uh, uh, actions, not words. I was about to say, according to Merriam-Webster, it's actions speak louder than words words so whatever you say here doesn't mean anything is what is what you're saying uh here through that look no i'm just kidding uh but uh yeah <laughs> fact on verb. i do like the design it's value you, you, i can't see it right now it's on it's on the obs but um you get the you get the you get the asymmetrical stars here you get uh one yeah, north one south cross, one north, and then two uh, on the bottom right it's a constellation you can see from australia for not for not so side of the side of the world Oh, okay. So, um, actually, that leads me into my next question here. What is the, um, uh, like, what's, is there, like, a general nationality that the group hails from? Because I know there are some Russian-based regiments, some English-based regiments, and so on. Yeah, we um, hail from a nation called Erv, you know, very good nation, <laughs> would recommend it. Yeah, we're very diverse yeah. in our nationalities. Like, uh, I'm from America, uh, Paul, I'm also from, from America. America. 
That's I American. That British. I'm British. American, British, and Australian, it looks like, because of the flag. Yeah, we have a couple yeah, of Australians. We also have people from Asia, to be honest, everywhere. Yeah, we got some Singaporeans, some Indonesians. Gotcha. Um, and does your regiment have any traditions that you gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like to do uh, while out on the field? Uh, Paul actually been uh, doing uh, this tradition where every first day of the war he does this really... Oh, yeah. Like, every first day of the war since War 60... Not War 60. Uh, I don't know, like War 61 or something. I always take a truck and just go to Reaching Trail. You know, just to get on a salvage field and just harass Logi. And recently, I've been started doing this as uh, doing this as a clan operation, not only me and my friends, you know. So that's a tradition we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess going back to the nationality question is, what time zones do you operate under usually? Do you have any night owls that, uh, like, do you normally operate under a certain time zone, or is it kind of all over the place? It's really all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is the strength of its own. Yeah, like, sometimes when we do operations, we have, like, people coming from Europe into, like, North America time zone operations, you know, like, kind of late in the night. We are just addicted to Foxhole, we don't need sleep, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I will say I have noticed that a lot of our operations tend to fall on the, uh, the point in time where uh, we have a lot of colonials getting off, uh, just due to, um, uh, just uh, I, I believe, I believe the colonials have a lot of uh, issues with uh, playing the game in the middle of the day, just because of the time zones that we have on our mm -hmm. side. Um, and a lot of our our operations happen around that time, where the fighting tends to get the hardest. Um, when it gets late towards the night, things tend to calm down. We still have people who play. I play often during that time period because I'm, I'd stay up from midnight to eight a.m. Uh, very often, um, but operations don't happen that often around that uh, around that time frame. Hmm. So, what would you say is the approximate size of your regiment in totality? How many people you got signed up officially? Uh, officially. Well, okay. I, I, give me a you can give me a guesstimate. Don't have to be an exact number. I'll say like almost between eighty and hundred. Eighty and hundred people playing Foxhole specifically, or just in the group? No, yeah. no. That's just the like official mean, members. But we got active members playing Foxhole. About uh, we got about like twenty this war. Hmm. I would say on. thirty. Thirty, I would say. So would you say your fieldable manpower at any given operation is I don't know five That's, to ten? I mean, per operation. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but then also random scatter shot throughout uh, throughout the various days. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can typically always find one of us playing. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, we usually always have five or six people on doing something. Do you have a preferred region? Uh, personally, uh -oh. I like Westgate. Westgate's my home. Yeah, we operate out <laughs> of Westgate a lot. Well, Westgate is the most based location, as it's in Westgate, not in Blemish, and every, like, to be honest, every region who is not Blemish is very based, you know? That's all <laughs> I got to say. Ah, uh, well, last war we tried to do something different other than other than Westgate was War 77, where we decided to try and set up an Allard's Bite, and we kind of all know how that story went. <laughs> One factory experience, let's go! <laughs> uh, Two you could... regions rolled. I think yeah. you kind of answered this earlier, but what are the primary doctrines and styles your regiment follows? Okay, so basically, it works like this. Our main tactic or uh, you know, uh, style we have is take people, take equipment, go front line and win. <laughs> and then we just figure out things along the way, you know. Because we are not like super organized, we just like to do, you know, like simple operations. Just take, like, you know, take some stuff, go do something fun on the front line, just have fun, you know. At the front line. Asterisk, may or may not win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you also have a very bad luck when it comes to getting stuck in cunes, you know? Like, very, very bad luck. Yeah, it's... it's kind of you mentioned tradition traditions earlier. <laughs> yeah. We kind of got an unwilling one of every time we try and do a op, we will inevitably encounter a queue. That ruins half the plan. <laughs> yeah. So to get around it, you kind of just... Uh... Improvise and send people elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. We try to. It's why having no particular uh, sort of specialization helps us because it's like, right, there's a queue there. Uh, we've got all our equipment here, and now we'll just go somewhere else. 
Right. Like, there was a law, I believe, I don't know how it's called, but there's a law that if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. So that's how operation works, you know, Murphy's so we just make law, up yeah. new things along the way. Yeah, it's called Murphy's Law, I think. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, you mentioned that um, uh, Div was mostly, D- Div is a proper nickname to, to call call the division, right? Or yep. is that? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I say Div is more of an all-round front line, just see what's going on and and fight uh, fight the good fight of the front lines. Uh, what would you say? Th- I mean, it's safe to say that uh, a lot of infantry, a lot of the time. What would you say your favorite weapon to use uh, among the colonials, is, or even among the wardens? What's your What's your favorite weapon? The uh, it has to be the rifle for me. Just the base rifle. Uh, I don't know. That's a tricky question. I would say Lancaster, probably. I'm a Dusk fan. Yeah, I would. I would dust fan. Uh, for AT though, I would definitely, I definitely love the Bing. It is amazing. How about your favorite kind of tactics? I mean, kind of, uh, just kind of rushing or more flanking or more. Uh, our tactics, like our tactics, is like there's literally no. Sometimes there's just no tactic. We just. Take shit, we just think, we just like look at wardens, we, we just wait for them to make mistakes, and then we just exploit them, you know, in any way, shape, or, shape or form you can. Yeah, very opportunistic. Yeah. It's like, we see a, see a weakness, I'm often always on binos looking for a weak point in the lines for us to go do a partisan, yeah. offer something, or just flank some tanks. Hmm. I think one hmm. of our strengths is that we try to fill in the gaps that we see the randoms or the plans or not. Yeah, because when we do operations, like, uh, we don't plan where to go beforehand. We just plan to do something, and then we check which front line needs some, you know, care, love, and attention, and then we just go there to fill in the gap. Yeah, th- so, and, um, you know, so it sounds like more like just kind of a general garrison at the front line group, and then when you see something good, I would say, take advantage of it. I would say yes, because most of the time when we do operations, we just go in, we deploy, we try to hold... And most of the time it works that way that we push and then more regiments arrive and they push harder with us or we just desperately defend a certain place and then other people arrive to, you know, relieve us. Yeah, that, so, seems yeah. very, that seems to be a very common theme. Um, it's something I actually messaged uh, uh, the press corps about in the first place, which brought this interview around, was um, just defense of uh, a point that was thought to be lost. And that seems to be a very, very common thing that Div gets some themselves involved in if there yeah. is a we place always get deployed into like worst fucking front lines ever yeah. you know we always we always I go mean, where yeah. there is the worst need of um of manpower where like the situation tends to get worse and try to hold as much as we can yeah can objective survive that's our operations most of the time <laughs> so does your uh, regiment have any kind of subdivisions subsidiaries affiliates uh yeah, we're actually part of the UCC. I don't know if you are aware of that group. I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, we work with them a lot. Um, it's actually really helpful in case we have like small numbers for a war. And remind we operations me, or something. Remind me, the UCC, United Colonial... Coalition. Coalition, there you go, that's right. I was thinking coordination. Um, yeah, how would you do, what would you say about about that group? Do you think it's uh, looking good right now, or is it kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah I think it's... Real healthy. It's really helpful to uh, have yeah. so many people to reach out to if you need something. Yeah, UCC is like a group of clans, which are like new or... Sm- I mean, I would say new or sm- like Typically there's like smaller, like, I'd say. With like a lot of, I would say, like inexperienced people, you know, like there's some like, you know, experienced guys, but, you know, because of the Steam cell and everything, a lot of the, you know, guys joined clans, so yeah. But I would say we are organized, like, very cool stuff. So you say more of uh, just kind of uplifting some of the smaller groups as opposed to um, coordinating on too high of a level? Oh, kind of. Yeah, it gives us a lot of, we know where everyone's operating, maybe we can help each other, that sort of stuff. Wait, I need to make a short break. Octavian, get your ass to the fucking town hall because they're bombarding it. Sorry for the break, but we're getting fucked in the front line right now. So, actually, you know what? What's a, what's a regiment you like working with? Either directly, like you concertedly seek, like offer them like joint operations, or just simply like seeing them out on the field. Like, hey, I like seeing these guys out in the field. But what's um, a regiment? We work closely with a group, I would say, not a regiment. Like, you know Klapek? 
Clapek. Or no. Yeah, so there's a group called Squad. Squad is like, I'm a part of it also. There's like a bunch of like sweaty, like 20 sweaty vets. <laughs> and you like to do like, you know, uh, operations behind the, you know, a backline. Like, our crown achievement was tapping Broid down, you know? So yeah, like, whenever like Clapek is doing something, like we, like I, you know, try to pull some guys from the division so we can also, you know, help and do something funny to the Wardens. So, so yeah, this isn't a... He's done some crazy ops. This isn't yeah. a regiment, but rather a group of people from various regiments? Ah, uh, yeah, regiments, yeah. randoms, you know, everyone. Huh. We just fill it. We fill out manpower when they plan something insane, like as mentioned, tapping Brody Town. <laughs> yeah, that's quite funny. Clapic. We'll see, there. Is that the name? There are. Hmm? What was that? Did I say it right? Clapic? Yeah, Clapic. Clapic, okay. Sorry, Charles, what were you saying? I was just gonna say there there do seem to be a a couple of regiments we tend to run into, not necessarily in a sort of planned manner, but we always end up in the same places. Hmm. And we work with them for a bit. Um what's the one Chinese based division that's usually armored focused? Uh CCG? Um, yes, CCG. Uh, I guys are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we always we always run into them. Uh I see I see us working alongside them a lot of the times. Um, there's a couple others. I can't. The names aren't coming to my uh, to mind at the moment. Uh, personally, I think seventy seventh is one. Run into those guys a lot. Often build yeah. a base near them just for the yeah. support in garrison supplies and anti passes and efforts that sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. And we also have a, we also have an advantage because in division we have a guy who speaks Chinese fluently, so we can you know coordinate with Chinese clans, especially CGC. I don't know about fluently, but he speaks well enough. <laughs> hey, what? So I wouldn't say fluently, but he speaks it well enough. No, Milo speaks well Chinese. Well, according to him, he, it's just barely enough to get by. He, he can talk, it's good, okay? And I'm like, it's good enough, you know? Well, honestly, it's just good to, to see people reaching across the time zones. Uh, I know your group, uh, according to what you're saying, uh, does it naturally because you're all spread out. But uh, just, just yeah. seeing one regiment work with another across time zones is, is really cool to see. Um, and I think, uh, honestly, Foxhole is just so unique. I think uh, going forward, um, I think a lot of regiments should look towards trying to recruit members um, who can speak uh, multiple languages uh, and then maybe maybe work on that work on that kind of coordination and hopefully some of the some of the game mechanics can help facilitate that as well at least just an organization but uh, yeah no that's that's <laughs> that's it's really cool um, so, so CGC and seventy um, seventh I think that's Muertos um, Gonzo's yeah regiment. yeah regiment he's the so leader of that one. The, yes yeah yes I believe. What is it? Yeah. Another one is, what, 183rd CD? Yeah, we were with them. Yeah, we had some of our guys join them because of just time zone conveniences not too long yeah. ago, so we've got good connections. I mean, technically, we work with every clan that is in UCC in some way or another, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is a fair amount of clans. Uh, Able Company, we did a lot of operations with them last war. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. Fun times, yeah, yeah, fun times. So, you know, what, in, in your opinion, kind of switching gears a bit, in your opinion, what's the key to success in Foxhole? And I won't specify further than that. You take that question however you like. What's the key to success me, in Foxhole? For me, I would say it's playing as a, as a, like, like playing organized and, like, don't worry about yourself. Worrying about, like, uh, the things that can actually win the front line because... A lot, like, after, like, there's a lot of new guys, you know, and most of them, like, play selfishly and they, like, I wouldn't say selfishly, like, they risk, they don't want to risk their lives and their equipment, you know, like, I would actually love to see more people just, you know, uh, playing as a group, like, like, all together, organizing, and not just going around, you know, just solo in, dying over and over again. Yeah, paying I would attention say, I would say to organization the is the biggest, like, biggest factor, you know, and working together. Um... Uh, I would say it's something similar. Maybe not necessarily organization, but definitely it's between coordination and cooperation. You know, oh, working yeah. with others, being able to plan with others what you're doing, and being able to work together cohesively is probably the most important factor in fighting and winning these wars. 
Um, and also having diverse shit, you know, like we have some people on artillery, some people on tanks, some people on infantry, you know. Yeah, and it's it's also it also lends to the fact that there's no singular means of combat that doesn't have its own weaknesses. You know, armor is strong against fortifications. They can come up, they can wipe out normal infantry, but without any sort of infantry support or other AT support or even artillery support, they're extremely vulnerable to being flanked and just destroyed. Uh, when it comes to infantry, you're not really that much of a match against armor outright, unless you can get uh, get in close. Artillery, you have to have a front line to hold off the encroaching enemy. Um, fortifications, you have to have someone who can counter um, the advances that are coming up on your fortifications or the artillery coming in. Um, and not even accounting for all of those, all of those need logistics, and logistics needs people to secure the roads that brings the supplies in. So it, it all it all ties very, very heavily into coordination and just being able to plan and work together to get, you know, the job done. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Key to yep. success, the most basic things, certainly. Um, what would you say your regiment's proudest foxhole moments are? Uh, um, I wouldn't say there's like one particular one. Sure. We had like few when we organized. Like our proudest moments, at least for me, is like when we organize something and like work together perfectly. Like everyone just listen to one in one each other, you know. So we actually do something organized. Like I remember once we were fighting far on the coast. We were fighting in Scythe. We had like three tanks against like eight tanks, you know. Mm. And we were, like dueling there for like few couple hours, and then we managed to kill seven tanks, we lost two, but then reinforcements came, so, you know, they pushed them back. You remember that, Octavian? Yeah, yeah, I think I was uh, on an LTD during that fight. Yeah, yeah. so that was, like, like our, our proudest moments. We kind of held the line, you know, everyone knew what to do, it was organized. Or was that an all-division, uh, mostly division uh, fight? Uh, yeah, it was, like... Uh, for the first part, it was like all division members because, as I said, our divisions, more, I mean divisions, I mean uh, operations, mostly consist of us, you know, going in, defending or attacking, then other people come to relieve us, you know. Because whenever we go, we always end up in a shitty, shitty situation, and then we just scream in all chats for people to come and help. And there's always somebody who will answer, you know. So we, we held the line. Yeah, yeah continue. Yeah, I mean, carry on. I mean, all I wanted to add is that we held the line against, like, quite, you know, uh, odds being against us. We could, like, seven tanks lost two, you know, and we held the line. So I was, I was like, very proud of that. Yeah, I would say my proudest moment of my regiment was during War 75. Just uh, the sheer willpower of our guys. <laughs> just playing every day almost. Oh, yeah. For me, it was probably the first Winter Army update. With mm. all the artillery changes. Because I remember us being in Lockmore near, every, near enough every time it got pushed with an artillery battery just ready to push to push him back out of it. And we were there for a good three days just doing a back and forth fight there. Oh, yeah, that oh, was wait, a good one. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, wait. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I have like a very, like, I would no, say proud this moment of the division. It's like in Loggerhead, we had we had built a bunker base that I withstand that, like, Two weeks of consistent warden pushes into the region. It was only that was the only line of defense we had because with warning and buffs and wash was completely open. But we have finally fallen once wardens brought up the old the old one fifty millimeter cannons and storm cannon to blow us out. But we held the line for like good solid two weeks, you know, with like wardens pushes half warden pushes happening like every one or two days, you know. We had to constantly QRF that shit. Are you talking about the tier two one we made that like lasted forever? <laughs> Yeah, Loggerhead. We had concrete there when Paul was playing, you know? You remember that? Ah, uh, I'm thinking about a different time. Yeah. But we held the line for as long as we could. That was like, you know, kind of... That was like quite fine to see the bunker face there after two weeks. And Ward is like pushing everything they had to at us because they were kind of pissed off. Because those were like random pushes. They were like clans like Siege, uh, AT2K and Hawk pushing us. Sounds like a big fight. Yeah, the, like, Loggerhead was like, like, there was like fight every day there, you know. 
We had like five tanks ready for QRF because there was so many, you know, wardens coming. So the artillery there, shelling them yeah, whenever also, they build bases. <laughs> yeah, also like six howitzers, uh, the old howitzers, you know, 120mm, like stocked up with shells. It was like non-stop fighting there. Lager had such a big crossroads, I don't think people will realize. There's five roads yeah. that stretch out uh, from the center of the town. Salt March to the northwest, yeah. which is a relic base, north to the Spit Rocks and Marbon, and then the rest uh, three ways into Drown Vale from there. Uh, no, no surprise that it's so contested. Yeah, our bunker base stretched out all the way from uh, somewhere of the salvage field to the uh, shoreline to the, on the right side, you know, to Salt Caps. The bunker was like, you know, just a big arc protecting pushes from Spit Rocks and Salt March. So, you know, uh, you know, it looks like you guys are very well versed in the game. So what's the, what's the one thing, only one thing, you could change or add to Foxhole? Or I guess remove? For me, I would like, I wouldn't, uh, that, it cannot be changed, but I would just love to change that people would like work together and like listen to one each other. Not like, you know, low rank as listening to Vez. I mean like everyone to everyone, you know? Hmm. Do you think, uh, there's so you think there's certain mechanics, certain things in the, the game could do to help facilitate that? Honestly, I don't know, man. It's like kind of like social thing, you know, that people should talk to each other more, not do things like, you know, solo. Hmm. I mean, in Foxhole, we have like, you know, things in place like, you know, you cannot do a tank solo, you have to get people so you need to you know, organize. And you cannot defeat a tank by yourself, you need people, you know, to stick a rush with you. And also, like, the ranks also help because you can, you know, if you need something or help, you can ask somebody with a higher rank, he will probably know the answer. I don't think we can actually change it beyond the point of just, you know, spreading awareness that, hey, we should work together, you know, like, low rankers with low rankers, vets with vets, low rankers with vets, you know. Overall, more cooperation between players, you know. I think maybe if they tied in the ranking system with the level system, somehow. Oh yeah, they should like display the level because yeah. They're kind of they're kind of one of the they're they're not they're different, uh, but they often kind of do correlate with each other depending on I guess how the person plays, uh, but yeah. So uh, what would you change about the rank and level system? Ooh. We'll, we'll go to we'll go to Bert first here. Well, no, not I was just suggesting that. Maybe once we like once they have their level high enough, it like ties in with their rank, so people won't get confused. Like, oh, this guy's a major, but he actually only has like a hundred hours in the game or something. He just got commended a lot by doing something. But like, I think if it's tied in with the level somehow, then you'll don't don't know like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy's a, a high ranker, but you know. Because of his play time in the game, or and honestly, I don't really know what, what levels you up in the game. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no concrete list, but uh, it's believed to be things like I think killing uh, is e e like extremely low, but things more like scrapping, delivering, st healing, stuff like that. Usually, I, I supposedly that's all not confirmed, of course, but supposedly has a higher weight to it. How much? I'm not sure. Yeah, because personally, I'd rather talk or not. I'd rather uh, communicate with some with someone if I was a new guy. If someone had a high level than a high rank. Mm -hmm. Charles Octavian, anything else? Well, for me, I've been doing a lot of building this one and previous ones, so I'd, I'd like a few quality of life changes to the building system. Just make bases a little less time intensive to make and. And build because if you end up doing it solo, if there's just not a lot of people on or they're off doing other things, then oh, you know, it takes hours to get a half decent base. Um, on my end, I'm actually still fairly new to the game. I actually only started playing uh, sometime last week, and it wasn't, I think it was like maybe my third day. I decided, you know, I've been seeing a lot of regiments running around, I'm gonna look for one, and I found a uh, division. I've been running with them since then, um, but I've learned a lot very quickly. Um, 
I just don't know too much about like what I would change and what I wouldn't yet. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to really make an assessment. You just kind of take it as it comes. Um, I guess you know, Charles. Then I guess we'll move on to the next question. Then, uh, what what's what do you appreciate the most about Foxhole? Uh, I might be able to answer that a little better. Um, it's it's a very different experience. Uh, it it's I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I know that it, it's very similar in or in the same vein of Planet Side Two as far as like mm-hmm. what kinds of experiences it can offer you. Um, you can have instances where you have groups of individuals such as yourself where you set up these small communities that are dedicated to, you know, playing music on Twitch for Logi. Uh, you might just be making stuff at the factory. You might just be loading things, scrap into a crate. Or you could be in the thickest part of the fighting in probably one of the most intense situations in the game. You know, stopping enemy pushes or stopping... Uh, an armored assault or something similar and it's that kind of variety and intensity uh, combined with how much you have to rely on other people um, to work with them that really kind of gives Foxhole a very unique feeling to it Um, it's not like other third person or first person shooters out there where it's very intense and rely on personal skill it's it's instead it's the opposite you have to work with people does anyone else want to echo that or disagree i would say for me is the like the feeling of the community and that you are playing with other players not alone you know like you like go they can stroll in the back line you get into a logic time you see people you know in the refinery, in the factory, somebody's like blasting some music somebody's screaming at each other you just feel that you are playing with other people you know you go to a salvage, you see other people, you know, scrapping with you. You go to a front line, you just see, like, people, you know, doing clutch to the front, people pushing as infantry, as tanks, people going here and there, you know. And all the sort of guys that you can talk about, or just do nothing, you know, with them, just talk, chill out, you know, or organize something. It's like, it's the feeling of the community, like, I, I don't think there's any game who actually has that feeling. I never experienced any, like, this like, completely, like, new to me, you know. It is so it's like kinda of perfect in a way, you know. Fox Oak can be perfect, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> I this say it's Fox I say it's community, like the feeling of the community, you know. Yeah, I would say. I agree. So it's, kind of, no, it's not perfect, not no very no. Yeah, yeah. So simplifying it does it does essentially come down to community. Yeah. Like there's there is one here. It feels alive. Like, you just, feel, you just feel you are playing with, like, a massive MMO with people, you know? Because you see people everywhere, no matter what you do, you know? It really helps that there's only one server, usually. Back to experience. Yeah, um, it's, I mean, I, I echo everything you, you gentlemen said, and I, I do hope the game does stick to one shard. I know, I, I know it's a technical reason why they can't, uh, why they always get, yeah. I'm very curious as to, as to what the, what the future lies there, but it's good to know that at least the vision, the quote unquote vision is to have, uh, one, one shard, one instance, one big war. So that's. That's I, honestly no other game does that. It's it's kind of kind of hard to go back to other games like, and in some ways, like for instance, um, Battlefield, right? Which obviously great game you can go back to uh, for different reasons. But uh, you know, going back to just those thirty two v thirty two or sixty four v sixty four without any context whatsoever, it's it's kind of it feels it feels different. So although yeah, still, yeah, still good fun. And especially the for me the weirdest thing about Fox was that you like I'm from Europe and I when I would join like you know Asian servers I would just lag the shit out of you know like three hundred MS but for some reason like I see like people from China, Australia, like all over the world and they just don't lag or they don't lag, you know? It's like I I actually am surprised how they do that, you know. I I don't know either. In fact, I have no idea the server infrastructure. Or um, yeah, I'm assuming. But... Well, actually, I probably I shouldn't do that because I, I was about to say I'm assuming the servers are located in Canada, where uh, Siege Camp, the developers of the game, are located. However, 
Um, that may not be the case. They may completely rent out to I don't know, some somewhere in Europe or Asia. That's I, mean, I have no idea. That that would have to be a developer question directly, but or some places all over the world. I don't know. I actually don't. In fact, that's a that's a good question to ask for the next uh, for the next yeah. round. But uh, hey, you I know what? For, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I for now we just have to assume it's you know it's magic and you know just stick to it. You know, don't question it too much or it will explode. Yeah, I think. Well, th those hamsters, I, I think by now are, are pretty uh pretty jacked to be honest with you. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think we're closing out here. Did you, gentlemen, have any... Actually, actually um, who or uh, where can people uh, who want to join... Uh, who would they? Who should they contact? To be honest, everyone. Everyone like, in, in you know, If you see a division member want to join division, just ask him, you know. He's yeah. going to afford it to ask him, you know. Yeah, we're pretty tight-knit, I would like to say. We, we talk a lot on Discord even when we're not playing the game. Yeah, and uh, the division also hosts a uh, Discord server as well, which I believe I don't know if you post to the regiment or the, I guess technically the clan recruitment channel in uh, in Discord in the Foxhole Discord. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right. Any closing statements from anyone here about uh, about division? Yes, uh, I would say that. I don't know what to say because that's how division works. We just don't know. We just do, you know. Simple as that. Facta non verba. Actions speak louder than words, don't they? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Join in. Give us a go. See how you like it. <laughs> well, that's our inaugural episode of Roll Call. Uh, looking into, taking a look at the various regiments uh, throughout Foxhole. Uh, sorry if there's any messiness here, but I want to thank Division uh, for taking the time uh, to join us here uh, at the Press Corps. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, for the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings. Good night and good fight. The Press Corps is a nonprofit creative collective of artists, reporters, and players from the MMO video game Foxhole by Siege Camp. Our mission is to engross our audience in and amplify the stories of this unique war ecosystem. The Press Corps was founded in early 2018 by former Planetside 2 Radio Free Araxis host, Captain in Arms. It is a separate community entity and is in no way representative of Siege Camp. For more information, visit the Press Corps Discord through the link below.